I used to hear, I've heard old saints say, the Lord is leaving earth. And you say to yourself, you know, these people were in the word, they're spiritually mature, but as you read your Bible and study your Bible, you start to realize what they're saying. Every time a saint of God dies, the Lord is pulling his troops back. Do you understand that? Do you realize that? Or you just think they just dying and that's just it? No, he's pulling his troops back. He's pulling his troops back. And every ground that God pulls his troops back on, oh, that devil ain't waiting a half a second. He on it. Well, give me some examples. Look at your laws. Look at your law. Do you think, do you think these laws are just coming into place just because, oh, just, just, no. They've been marching. This homosexual thing ain't nothing new. They've been marching for over 40 years. Why is it that it's starting to come take root now? Because he that will let, will let until he's taken out of the way. That's the, that's the restraining power of the Holy Ghost. And where's the Holy Ghost? In the church. So the church right now, the only reason why this world ain't in complete, utter, gross darkness is because we still got the church here. I work at night. You all know that. A lot of times I'm able to see the sun when, it, when, the, when the light first comes up. A lot of times you'll see there's just a little sliver of light across the sky. Still relatively dark, but it's enough light to kind of see a little bit, you know. But sometimes at night, it gets, when it gets its blackest, when it gets its darkest, and then you see that little bit of light, it's like, a, it's like that's why they call it the dawn of the day. The day is coming in. And I'm telling you now, you can see that we're getting to a place where I'm looking at my kids, especially my younger kids. Kids today are not going to know what's right and wrong by looking at the government, by looking at society. They're not going to know. If parents don't put something in them, they're not going to know what's right. They're not going to know. You got men calling themselves women and getting the, 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 the change and all this, and, and they're fixing it so that now that you almost, if you call them by their male name, you might, who knows, you might get in trouble for it. You might get in trouble. They might say that's harassment. Do you realize that's where we're going, or are you just going to just wait till it happens? Oh, it ain't happening. We just, we just so foolish, and I'm not trying to rebuke nobody, but that's how we are. We wait till the very last minute. It's like it's got to be right in my face. You got to see that devil all the way down the street. If this homosexual thing is taking place, what do you think is next? Then the dog is, well, I can take my dog down the aisle. I'm, t I'm, I'm telling you a fact. Man, don't wait till it happens. Oh, that's, that's what you're talking about. Don't be foolish. Yes, ma'am. Things are changing rapidly, and she's right because we all know about this young man that uh, uh, gave some secrets away on, on America. No, not Snowden. The other one, the, the military one, Bradley. Yeah. He, he don't want to be called Bradley Manley no more. He had his name changed. He had his name changed. I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm just trying to put something on your mind. Listen, it's getting real, it's getting dark. It's getting gross dark. Darkness that you can feel. Is this something new? No. It happened back, back in Egypt. It was darkness where they could feel. They could feel the darkness. And even though you might say, well, that's not the same kind of darkness. You could feel this. Why? Because the laws are fixing this so that now, what's going to happen to the church? Persecution. Some of us going, you know why? Some of us asleep. We're going to take down. Well, I mean, that's what they told me to call them. Well, what you want me to do? You should know what to do. If you build yourself up on your most holy faith, you're going to know what to do. You're going to know 
That's Bradley, and that's what I'm calling him. That's harassment. I'm not saying it to harass you. Well, I'm a, I'm a lady. I'm calling you what, what, what I know God made you. There's gonna be, I see your hand. I, I, I'm coming right to you. This is where we're going. And why are you saying that about, because the next big thing is the rapture. You see this thing? Look here. Look at what John said at the end of the book. He said, even so, Lord, come. It gets just so bad. Lord, you know what? If you save and you, you got the Holy Ghost and you, even so, Lord, come. Lord, I, I don't want to be in this place. I don't want to be a part of this society, Lord. I, because it's no way. I, I can't live like this. Even so, come. That should be all of our cry. And if your cry's not, Lord, even so, come, you need to check out where you are with the Lord. I don't know where you want to try to make something out of this life. Go ahead, Sister Murray. Yeah. You know what's so sad? So you, if you don't think the devil is the God, Lord G, Lord Case G of this world, think about this, class. Think about this. I saw a guy the other day. He can laugh. He can laugh and play with God. Laugh and play with God. But you bet not say nothing against the homosexual. You bet not say nothing against uh, any other, you know, faith or anything. It's, 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 it's crazy. Can't say Jesus. But you can say all of Buddha, any of other religion, and nobody say a word about it. Do you not see where we are? You can't say Jesus? That means if you can't say Jesus, then that means folk can't be saved. Folk can't be delivered. And you know what that devil's saying? Right, that's exactly what I want. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to show you where we are. And we sleep, and some of us sleep and don't want to be waking. Don't get me up. I don't. I don't want to hear that. We want to play. We want to play. We want to play. We, 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 we want to be, well, I've yeah, been saying Jesus is coming for X amount of years, all my life. You know, you, you know, you know that the scripture talks about the, we talk about the last days and we act like that's something new. That ain't nothing new. Look in your Bible. Has at these last times spoken to us by his son. The last days started when Jesus put, stepped foot on the earth. Yes, sir. You got something? You got something to say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and, 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 and that, like I said, we can see little sign, shadows of this in the Old Testament. When Lot came out, and I know Lot, Lot had lost his testimony, but Lot went to tell him, oh, God going to destroy this place. They said, this man need, must needs to be a judge. That's why I tell people all the time, you ain't going to know, you ain't going to these clubs to witness to, but for Jesus. None. Them people did not come to that club to hear about Jesus. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you, are, you out of bounds. Lot, you didn't came down to Solomon Gomorrah. This is what that man let you know. You came down here. You knew what this place was about. You think you're going to be a judge? You think you're going to tell us? We're going to have to deal with you more harshly than we dealt with, than we're going to deal with them. All right. What, what, what did, all right. First Thessalonians 4th chapter, 13 to the 18th verse. All right, do we have it? Now, what does it say? 13th verse of 1 Thessalonians 4. It says what? But I would. Let's just stop right there. I'm, I'm going I'm to go ahead and read some more, but I want to I make a point. Concerning them 
which are asleep. Why does it say asleep? Is everybody that's in the grave asleep? And if everybody in the grave is not asleep, then, then, then why does it say the saints are asleep and it doesn't say the other people are asleep too? Huh? Indicates peace. Absolutely. Also, no rest for the wicked. See, these people here, they, they own me. They own me with that word. But I also believe sleep is also denoting that it's temporary. Jesus, Jesus said about John, said, says, uh, so he said, Jesus said about Lazarus, said he told his disciples that Lazarus is asleep. Oh, Lord, if he's asleep, he does well. Let's go sleep with him. Jesus said, plainly, Lazarus is dead. Why did he say it in the beginning? Because he wanted them to know that it was temporary. It's temporary. That sinner man that dies, I told you that as a tree falls, there shall lie. He's going to experience true death. He ain't going to get no rest. And that, and that, and that where he going, that holding cell where he going, he ain't getting no rest. Then you think about this. You in hell for, think about somebody like Cain that died and didn't do what he's supposed to do. And he been in that, 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 that holding cell for about 6,000 years. Better than 6,000 years. Then he going to come out of that, come around the white throne of judgment, and get what? He going to get thrown into the lake of fire. So if he think where he is now is bad, he haven't experienced bad yet. He going to find out, I haven't even experienced bad yet. But the saint of God is at rest. You cease from his labor. He ceases from his work. But now, now I don't, and I don't want to go off into this, but he's in the presence of the Lord. Now, what better rest could you get? He's with Jesus. Then he comes back, gets his glorified body, and then get to go and live with Jesus forever. My, 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 my. What a wonderful time. What a wonderful, wonderful. You want to give that up? You want to throw that away for about 70 years of living on this earth, doing what you want to do? You out of your mind. I don't care if you live to be 99 like my grandmother. If you don't get to know Jesus, you wasted your time. Now, you ain't going to hear nobody tell you that. I'm going to tell you. You wasted your life. It would have been better if you wasn't born. Then, on top of that, you, you, you realize, look, man, look, I, I could have I I lived a good life on earth if I had Jesus. Does that mean you're not going to have no suffering? Does that mean you're not going to have no hard time? No. But he gives you a peace that can't nobody in this, this room right here that has peace. Can't no, none of us in this room, can, can none of us explain it. What's wrong? You just got to be a witness for yourself. I can't. What's explain to me about the peace? I can't. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trust. I can't describe it. I can't tell you about it. You got to try it for yourself. All right. Read the next verse. The 14th verse. Go ahead. The 18th verse says what? Why he say comfort? Some of us don't think that's comfort. <laughs> well, some of us say in this day and time, we ain't comfort. I, 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 I want to go in the rapture, but just not right now. I want to go with Jesus, but let's, let's hold off a little bit. Let's, you know, let me live the rest of my life out. Maybe them saints that, that were being comforted then were going through tribulation. And that's our hope. When you go through difficulties and hard times, the key thing is, am I saved? Because you know why? You're coming out of whatever you're in. One way or the other. One way or the other, you're coming out. All right. The fifth chapter, that same book. 
And now, hopefully in this fifth chapter, we can see. We need to read the whole chapter. But let's, let's understand that this is explaining to you that you're coming out, I believe, pre-tribulation. Pre-tribulation. Not mid, not post, pre-tribulation. We're going to be raptured before the tribulation starts. Actually, when the church gets raptured out, it's going to signal the, the tribulation. It's going to be the end of the grace period. And then you got, I think the Lord speaks about, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's in Romans where he says he's going to do a short work in righteousness. That's what he's talking about. He says, Paul says over Romans, I think 11 chapter, he says, so all Israel shall be saved. Is he talking about every one of Israel? No. Talking about the 12 tribes. God's going to take out a group of each tribe, a remnant, the Bible says. All right, what does that fifth chapter say? The first verse. Do we know that? Are we convinced of that? You know perfectly that the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. All right, go ahead. What does the third verse say? All right, stop right there. When, when is this, class? You say what? After the rapture. This is not before. A lot of times we, and yes, Jesus is coming as a thief tonight. I believe the rapture is going to happen suddenly. That's why the scripture tells us, be ye also ready. But this right here that he's talking about right now, currently as we read, this is at the end of the tribulation. Go ahead, read. Let's read together. Let's, wait a minute. Let's start over. Let's read that together. We want to get that good. What, what does it say? Come on, read. Go. Mm hmm. Read. Ninth verse. Read that again. Go ahead. My Lord. My Lord. Go ahead. All right, stop right there. Now, he's talking to you about what's going to happen at the end of the tribulation. But he lets you know that ain't, that's not going to happen to you. You're not the children of darkness. This is what's gonna happen to the children of darkness. They, I'm, I come when I come to church. I come down New York Avenue. Man, they didn't fix that bridge up. They building stuff. I mean, man, the stuff in this city here is. I, 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 I lived in this city for 23 years before I got married, and my, I grew up in the city. And to see this city be rebuilt and read, I mean, it's unbelievable. I go to parts of D.C. I'm like, man, I don't even, I don't even recognize this stuff no more. They are building like no other. It's going to get bur burnt up. It's going to get destroyed. They, it, I believe in, it might be in Haggai, one of the prophets. He said, you can build. He said, but I'm going to tear it down. All, right. all this stuff you see that they're doing, all this beautiful, like, all oh, beautiful. Absolutely, just breathtaking. When you come over that bridge on New York Avenue, it's beautiful. The lights, beautiful. The, the, the artwork, absolutely beautiful. It's going to be burnt up. It's going to be messed up. So why are you trying to make something out of this life when it's just going to get tore up? What you want to invest in, listen here, all we're doing is we're pilgrims. And, and, and we can look at two different types of pilgrims, two different people in the Bible, Abraham and Lot. You know what I wrote down about Lot? I'm, I'm going to tell you what I wrote. Abraham, we know Abraham was a pilgrim. Why? He dwelt in tents. Is that right, class? What, what you trying to say? I'm not staying here no long time. He went from city to city, this place to place. He didn't, he didn't get a permanent house. I don't think Abraham ever got a, uh, a permanent house. But Lot did. 
And you know what I wrote down when I saw, saw that Lot had stopped walking with Abraham and he went down to uh, 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 Solomon Gomorrah? I wrote, Lot stopped pilgrim. He stopped being a pilgrim right here. Why? He had a house. You don't take my word for it. You can read it for yourself. He had a house. What's wrong? Stop being a pilgrim. Man, I, 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 Lot was a type of, he was a type of carnal mind and saint. But he was saved, yes. He was saved. I agree he was saved. But look at what he lost. Look at what he lost. That's what we don't take notice of. Look at what he lost. He lost all his sons. He lost most of his, his children. He lost his wife. Yeah, you might be saved. But I mean, wouldn't it be nice if you can be saved and you can carry your family with you? I mean, you just want to be saved. You mean to tell me you glad, as long as I make the heaven, hey, Susie, you got to do what you, you got to do. You, you on your own. I mean, that's kind of rough, ain't it? See, so sometimes we do stuff. We go down certain lanes we shouldn't go down. And what happens is we lose our children. We, I better leave that alone, I guess. I might get in trouble for that. You, that shouldn't make you feel good as long as I be saved. No, I want all of them to be saved. If they don't be saved, I want it to be because they made that choice. Not because I led them the wrong way. I put them in harm's way. You don't read about none of Abraham's servants and stuff getting burnt up. You don't read about that. But Lot, Lot lost everything. Everything. All right? We finished reading that. All right. Let's go, let's go over to Revelations. My time is winding up. Revelations, the 19th chapter, uh... And 14 verse. Now I want to show you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why? Because they know some things about the history. They understand that, you know, uh, what is taking place. And again, like you said, this is history. This is after the rapture is taking place. So this, your quote just now, that shows you how close we are. You own it. You, and see, that's the thing with us. We get, we, 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 listen, the mystery of iniquity, John said, doth already work. You got all kinds of secret societies and secret things that are going on. We ain't aware of it. All this stuff that's classified documents, if we, were, uh, we're, were, if we knew about it, we'd be like, whoa, Jesus is really coming. He doing that? Oh, the Lord is coming. We'll be shocked out of our mind the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. You better take this word and believe this word. Government ain't going to come to you and show you the classified documents and stuff they're working on, that they're doing. Look, concentration camps and all this other stuff that they're doing that you and I aren't privy to. They easing us into it. Google asked me on my smartphone, said, uh, can I, uh, 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 it asked me to leave, can it track me, want to track me. First I was like, oh, that's kind of spooky, man. I don't really like that too much. But then, especially after this NSA thing came out, you see that they're already doing that. This thing is kind of on the scary side. Now it tells me, when I go to church, it tells me, do you want me to keep track of this place? I went on and just put church. I just went on and put church. So then every time I, I, I mean, and, and this, this is something I took notice of. It knows, where I, it knows where I work at. It knows where home is. When I, when I went into the Google thing, it, 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 it had me home. I said, how you know that? I didn't, I didn't tell you. This is before I realized. Now what I'm starting to pick up is when it's time for me to go somewhere, like when it gets closer to me going to church, It'll, 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 when I go to the, uh, and I'm going to have to show you this so you can see what I'm talking about. It'll pop up church. How you know that I might be getting ready to go to church? It's obviously somebody, some way or another, is tracking the times that I take that route to church. Like right now, it'll tell me I'm at church. It knows where my sister's house is. 
There are many stages to this rest. Rest now, but rest later. If we can just hold on to this confidence which we have, we can hold on to this and keep living and walking like God has required us to live, we're going to get a rest that we never have to worry about being disturbed again. All right, Romans 5 and 9. Y'all ready? All together. We should be saved from what? And what is that talking about? The tribulation. The tribulation. He, he, he saved us from that. That's the whole purpose of saving us. So that we don't have to go through that. That's the judgment on the world. We're not going to be judged with the world. And I know we know this, but we need to be reminded. Because you got now, you got folk coming to church trying to tell you that we going, we, we, the church and the world. No, no, no. God's not going to judge us together. Judgment must begin where? If you're going to be saved, you got to be judged. You're getting judged right now. The scripture said, judge yourselves. That you be not judged. What you, uh, cleanse yourself from the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Perfecting holiness. Your judgment is happening now. Right now. And, and when you get around that, that judgment seat of Christ, you ain't going to be getting judged for sin. That won't be about sin. Jesus took care of the sin problem on, on Calvary. When you come around the white, when you come, not the white, you ain't come around the white on the judgment if you say it. When you come around the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to be getting judged for your works. That's why we ought to be finding out what, what God would have us to do. Instead of just feeling like, well, I'm saved as long as I got the Holy Ghost and move along. And I'm, all right. I shout a little bit, speak in tongues a little bit. It's more to your saved life than that. It's more to your saved life than that. It's more to it than that. And I think, yes, we all say, I just want to be saved. I just want to be saved. And we say it like, if I can just be saved, I ain't worried about the rest of you. you, you when you get around that judgment seat of Christ, I believe you will be a little bit sad that you didn't do better. Because if you go and read, when Paul talks about it, you read about it, the Bible talks about suffering loss. So you're going to be looking at some of the, you know how you do. Everybody's excited when they graduate from high school or college. Everybody, you, you, glad, you, you are glad to get that diploma or that bachelor's degree or whatever degree you're going to get. But trust me, when you see somebody else going past you five, six, seven times getting awards, it do make you a little bit envious. Then be real about it, don't it? I know it do to me. Man, I could have done better. You know what? Every time, every time Joe, Do Joe Blow go past me, you know what I think to myself? I could have done better. 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 Yep. And I don't believe you get, I heard elders say, I heard one of our fathers say this. People get baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost, and they go up to heaven. Yeah, they're they, they going to get eternal life. But there's no way they're going to get all that somebody that has been saved for 20, 30 years and have works going to get. It's, it's, there's just no way. I, well, why are you talking about this? I want to, put, to provoke you to good works. I want to provoke you to get up off of the seat of do nothing and get busy. That's what I, why we're bringing this up. And make sure, be sure that you're going to be ready to go. Don't take for granted that you're going to go. Do all you can so you'll be ready. Like I said before, I started off by saying the word has been coming about three or four times. Set your house in order. That's not for naught. Somebody individually needs to set their house in order. But definitely... Every last one of us that heard that need to set our house in order. We need to make sure it's secure. Why you said it? Because God keeps sending that word. And he ain't sending it for naught. And a lot of times then we want to holler, oh, I, but I didn't know. Well, you heard. Why you didn't know? Why you didn't know? You heard it. I just didn't think he was talking about me. Take heed to yourself. That's why Paul, that was one of his main things when he said to Timothy. Take heed to yourself and to the, God, to the doctrine. Take heed. 
You preaching it, but are you taking heed? Are you listening? We've heard all of our life Jesus is coming. All of our life. All of our life. And it becomes a, 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 almost a, just a, something you hear. God is a merciful God. Peter said he's not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness. But he's long-suffering to us, Ward, not willing that any should perish. Anybody that find themselves lost ain't going to have nobody to blame but themselves. Amen. I don't believe God puts you in hell. I don't believe God puts you in the lake of fly. You put yourself there by virtue of choice. You put yourself there. All right? We read Romans 5 and 9. Shall be saved. From wrath through him. All right? First Thessalonians 1 and 10. You have it? What does it say, class? See? So you see, I ain't, just, I ain't just reading one scripture there. Scripture out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That's two right there. We shall be saved from wrath to come. So what about those that feel like, well, I, uh, if, I, if I, I can go through the tribulation. I used to think that when I was a kid coming up before I got saved. I thought, you know, if I mess around, if I don't get saved, you know, I, I just go through the tribulation. First of all, you, you know you can't even have be saved during a relative time of peace. How in the world are you going to make it through the tribulation? You out of your mind. I don't mean to you know, be disrespectful to nobody, but you out of your mind. You crazy. Ain't no way. All that stuff's going to be coming on this earth. That's why Revelations is what it is. That's why it says what it says. Because it's trying to warn us. God, it's almost like God is saying, please don't, don't mess around and find yourself there. That's why it tells you all that. People are like, oh, you're just trying to scare me. You're trying to find me. If you got any sense, you'll, you'll, you'll take heed and do something. Don't let the devil trick you and fill your mind up with, oh, y'all just trying to make somebody scared. When it happens, it's going to be too late. The time to do something is now. That's why John tells you, uh, the one scripture talks about, uh, uh, let him that be filthy be what? What else does it say? What, what, let him be holy still. You know what that's saying? And if somebody got a better explanation, you can give it. Basically, bottom line, the scripture says this. This might be in the Old Testament. It says, as a tree falleth, there it shall lie. Whatever state you die, that's where you're going to find yourself. If, you, if Jesus come and you, and you ain't right, you filthy, you out here doing whatever, that's, that's what's going to happen. You know what? The scripture says, the scripture says this. It says, uh, talks about, um, it's, one, one scripture says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, what's going to happen? You're going to reap corruption. Don't think, don't fool yourself. You only fool yourself. You ain't tricking me. You ain't tricking the past. You ain't tricking the people. You fooling yourself. Don't do that. Don't do that. Get in this church. Don't keep, look. I tell you all the time. Don't worry about friends. Don't worry about people. Focus on where am I? Where am I going? How, how important to you is the rapture? Let me say this to you. you can, we keep thinking we got time. We got time. We got time. Let me tell you something. We ain't got a whole lot of time. Do you not know? Do you see what's going on? I mean, just, just stop. Let's just pause for a second. Look at our society. If, you know, when, when America pulled out of Iraq, did they just pull out the 50,000 just like that class? No. What did they do? Little at a time. Little at a time. I'm hitting, I'm saying this, but I'm hitting right to scripture. I'm going to go right to scripture. Little at a time. 50,000, we'll break it down to 35,000, 20,000, 15,000 until we just... The last, it may be a few hundred over there training somebody, but they're not over there to really hold evil at bay. The Iraqi army at this point 
has to be able to, to do that. What are you saying? Why do you say that? Because any place I go, I'm not telling you some, some fake something. I'm telling you something that's real. They tracking you. I ain't, trying to, uh, uh, I, ain't, I ain't trying to scare nobody or make nobody afraid. It's nothing new. Now they talking about doing the drones. See, first thing, talk about the mystery of iniquity. You know, the first thing they were doing, the drones, we only associated that with the war. I never thought about no drone flying around, you know, here. Now they talking about having the drones flying around here to, 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 to watch people, and they talking about delivery. I saw a clip somewhere where they delivered a pizza to somebody's house or something on that wise. Now, y'all, y'all probably think I'm talking out of my mind. I ain't talking about my mind. I ain't crazy. And I ain't saying this to try to give you something to try to soup you up. That's what happens when you sleep. You're not conscious. You're not aware of what's going on. And if you sleep that day, it's going to catch you unawares. I don't believe you're going to be saved. If you, go, if you sleep, I don't believe the rapture is going to come and you're going to be saved. That's, that, that's not talking about physical sleep. It's talking about spiritually. It's letting you know, wake up. Your redemption draw off now. Don't be foolish. There are many doctrines in the church today. I've never, in my little short time of living, I ain't never seen so many doctrines. These folk bold now. All kind of doctrines floating around in the church now. It's almost like you're seeing a little cosmos of what's going on in the world. Just like I told you before, kids are not going to know the difference between man and woman. They're not going to know what's, they're not going to know right and wrong. And in the church, folk ain't gonna, the, the true doctrine, the, 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 the doctrine that, that our fathers taught us down through the years, it's becoming, it's almost getting pushed to the background more and more for this, for this new age of, of health, wealth, and prosperity. And praise is what I do. Folk hate you for talking about that. I'm trying to wake you up. What's wrong? Jesus is coming. I heard that alone. I know, but you sleep. Jesus is coming. Wake up. Why? Do your redemption draw if not? You mean to tell me all you done gone through, all you done suffered, you trying to miss this? For a little bit of nothing? Esau sold his birthright. I'm trying to tell you that don't be like Esau. He sold his birthright like some of us are doing. Selling off, selling Jesus out. And then when it came down to get the reward, he thought he was going to get his blessing. Didn't he, class? Did he not, class? You can say amen. And his father was going to bless him anyway. That's my boy. I mean, he, he go out there, he know how to hunt. That's, that's a manly man. When it came time for him to get his blessing, he didn't get it. And it's the same thing for those of us. That's the worst part of Laodicea. They rich and increase with goods. And that's not what the problem is. The problem is that they're rich and increase with goods. And no, if not, that you are poor, miserable. That that you are poor, miserable, blind, and naked, that's that's not the worst of it, class. What's the worst of it? You don't know that. Because if you knew it, you could get help. That's why the Lord says, I would that you were cold and hot. You tell me, God, God, you tell me you would that I was cold? Yep, because I can make you hot. But if you don't know that that's your condition, you ain't going to do nothing about it. So nowadays, back in the day, folk would backslide, they lead the church. Yes, sir. Backsliders left the church. Not no more. Backsliders sit in the church, shout, speak in tongues, and everything else with everybody else. That's the state of Laodicea. The people rule. You're not going to, right, look here. Ain't nobody going to have me talking about this. Ain't nobody, I ain't going nowhere. I can rest assured I ain't going to no churches. I can tell you that right now. They're not going to have you. Who do you think he is? You're out of line. You're out of place talking that. Man, that's that old, old stuff. Nobody want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. You're not going to win the popular vote speaking like that. 
This generation here, if you want to be somebody in this generation, in this church age, you're going to have to give folk what they want. But I'm here to tell you Jesus is coming. Set your house in order. I might as well add that on to it since everybody else talking about it. Set your house in order. Thank you, Brother Dan. Set your house in order. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You on the money, Doc, and I appreciate you revisiting that because maybe somebody got the impression that I'm saying you can be calm on mind and be saved. Well, you know, the Lord, first of all, we see the difference. The angel of the Lord, first of all, Abraham interceded. Obviously, Lot had something in him toward God. The Bible tells you he was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. So even though he was down in there, he knew enough about God and loved God enough where I, possibly he would. I don't believe Lot was um, complicit with that style. So I believe he was living holy down there. But you took your children down there and they don't know enough about God. They don't know God like you know him. They haven't been taught like you've been taught. That's why his daughters did what they did. They did what they did because that was part of that culture. And that culture got in them. I'm going to tell you something. I just, I'm, I, I, I don't know when Jesus is coming. I'm not trying to put no date time. But it's got to be somewhere. You know, have you, ever, you, ever, you ever drove somewhere and somebody tell you, well, when you see the gas station on your left, you, 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 you two blocks away from it, you say, I'm, you're looking for the place. You know, that's how I feel about the Lord coming. It's got to be somewhere up in here. It's got to be. This, how, how much worse can this place get? How? And you got to be saying, if you say, you got to know that. How much further do we got to go before the Lord's coming? It's got to be somewhere around the corner. The Bible says scoffers going to be in the land. We got people today that's scoffing. Man, you know, that's what they, they're always talking at. Scoffers. Folk bold now. They bold. They'll argue you down. They'll fight you tooth and nail. That never used to be. What's wrong? The influence. He that will let. The more and more the Lord is drawing himself out of the world, the more and more you're going to see demonic powers raging. They raging. And we shouldn't be surprised. We should be, we should be saying in our mind, yeah, yeah, Jesus coming. I mean, have you, have you noticed? Have, am I by myself? Have you noticed a lot of folk committing suicide? Yeah. I, I, I mean, really? Have you paid attention to that? Or am I by myself with that? Every time I turn around, somebody commits suicide. Every time I turn around, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. I don't think I could be a police officer. I'm going to be honest with you. Ain't no way. These jokers today, crazy. Full of the devil. It's the day we live in. The hour is the, 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 the dawn of the day. It's getting darker and darker. And you know when it gets the darkest of night, Right? Past dark as a night, the dawn of day coming. All right? Did we read Revelation 19, 14th, 19th chapter, 14th verse? Now, I'm trying to show you the church. I want to show you the church with Jesus coming back to fight against the armies of this world. I told you I'm pre-tribulation. And I'm showing you that the church is with Jesus when he comes back to fight against the armies of this world. The 14th verse of the 19th chapter of Revelation, what does it say, class? All right, now, now what, 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 how, do, how do we know that's the church, class? Huh? Go over to Revelation 19 and 8. Go ahead, what does it say? What is the 8th verse of 19th chapter? That's, that's, the, that's the church of, uh, uh, that's the Jesus only church. Riding on that horse. I don't know, I ain't, well, I ain't rode a horse since I was a kid. 
But you know, that's that, that going to be amazing. We're going to be playing hops. Or a lot of stuff that we're going to do, I don't know, I can't play no instruments. I wouldn't, if you threw me on the horse right now, I'd be in a world of trouble. But when I get that, that new body and that new mind, I'm going to be able to do things I ain't never been able to do before. That's going to be wonderful. And I'm just trying to get your mind set. We're going to judge the world. Do you know we're going to judge the world? Does that mean anything to you? We're going to judge angels. What angels are we going to judge? We're going to judge the angels in heaven? What, what angels are we going to judge, class? When the Bible says we're going to judge angels, anybody know what angels we're going to judge? It's got to be the fallen angels. Somebody go over to Psalms 149, 7, 7 verse, 7 through the ninth verse. Psalms 149. What does it say? Anybody have it? What's the ninth verse say? This what? Have all the saints. Wonderful. Exciting. Something to look forward to. All right, let's go to Jude, 14th verse. Let's start there, and I'm getting ready to wrap up. I, 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 I'm not going to try to belabor the time. I'm getting ready to wrap I'm going to read Jude, and I might read one more, and that'll be it. Yes, ma'am. No, you stay away from that. Yeah, but, you know, Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. And, and why I agree with you, Sister Murray, because I was on the tail end of that. They scared me. But fear can only take you but so far. Fear will get you saved, but I don't believe fear going to keep you saved. You got to fall in love with Jesus. Yes, indeed. Can the church say amen? amen. You got to love the Lord. You got to love the Lord. You got to love him. You got to fall in love with them. What the Bible say about love? Love is stronger than death. When you love the Lord, I mean, you do things because you love the Lord. You don't want to. You don't want to hurt the Lord. But when you fearful, well, I, 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 I don't want to go to hell. No, I don't want to go to hell. But more important for me than going to hell is I don't want to miss Jesus. I don't want to miss Jesus. Thank you, Sister Janice. I don't want to miss Jesus. He's too important. He is the greatest gift, not only in this earth, in the universe, there's not a greater gift. There's not a greater gift. You mean I can have Jesus all of eternity to myself? Yep. And it, don't, it, it won't stop Ella Ruth from the Jesus he got and Ella Summers and anybody else. We all can have Jesus as much as we want. For all of eternity. That's a beautiful thing. And I won't step on your area of Jesus. You won't step on mine. We all could just, oh, that's just going to be wonderful. You so heavenly minded, you know earthly good. <laughs> Foolishness. <laughs> if, if, if ye be risen with Christ, what does it say, class? You better get some scripture. Folk will talk some nonsense to you. You so heavily mind, you know everything good. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above. What? Above. Above. Set your affections on things where? Above. Everybody, don't you? Be, let the church say amen. amen. Let's put that to rest. Did we read that? Jude 14 verse? What does it say, class? How many? To do what? What's the next verse? Yes. 
Now, Enoch spoke that. Enoch. So I'm just trying to show you that the church, we're coming back for Jesus. He going to rapture us out of this world. Then you got seven years of, of uh, the judgment seat of Christ. And when God is done with that, then we're going to come back with Jesus at the end of the tribulation. Because Jesus is going to set his kingdom up on his earth. Now, during that time, during that time, John and, and Elijah is going to be preaching the gospel. What? What's the gospel? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I think Revelation, the 14th chapter, is going to be an angel from the sky that's going to preach it. Why, 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 why are they going to be preaching? Because if God, to show you, Abraham said, won't the judge of all the earth do right? Look at, look at, look at God. Look at, look at God. He's furnishing a ministry because he took out the church. There's no way to be saved if I take my church out. If I take my church out, there's no way for men to be saved. So I got to establish a ministry. I got to put, wait a minute, you got the Catholics, you got the Methodists, you got the Presbyterian, and all these other faiths that are down here. Why can't, why won't? Because that's not God's church. And they have never been able to birth a son of God. Never have and never will. The only church that's able to birth the son of God is the Jesus only church. When God takes the church out, then he's got to replace it with another ministry. And I really believe that's where Amos 3 and 3 comes in. I believe that's Amos 3 and 3. I believe it's Amos 3 and 3. It says in those days, it talks about the, there's going to be a famine, not for the uh, uh, food or water, but for the hand of the word. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be, folk going to be, Canvassing C to C, trying to hear the word. And you know good and well, folks, let me tell you something. We can see little things in the Old Testament. I think it was one king, it might have been Nebuchadnezzar. What, it might have been Nebuchadnezzar. He told uh, his astrologers and everything. He said, look here, tell me my dream. Tell me my dream. Oh, no, no, no nobody can tell you your dream. Nobody ever asked uh, 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 the astrologers a hard question like that. He said, look here, if you can tell me my dream, then I can know you, you really properly can properly interpret it. They've been lying to you for years. And some of them same liars going to be sitting here, I thought you told me if I do this, I'll be saved. You probably won't even be able to find some of these lying preachers. But you know what? You Don't get mad with them. Get mad with yourself. Because the only way, let me tell you something, the only antidote against error is the love of the truth. If you don't love this truth, you can't help but get error. You can't help but get false doctrine. The purpose of the rapture is to deliver us from the wrath to come. It's to deliver us from the wrath to come. Look here. Let's make our call and election sure. Let's do all we can to be ready for this rapture. Jesus is soon to come. Do not play around. If you're here and you're on the side of my voice and you missed this rapture, if you haven't heard this before, I'm going to tell you now. You lost. You lost. You coming around that white throne of judgment, that white throne of judgment. What, what, what one of the scriptures says, uh, says, uh, uh, this group going to rise up. None of are going to rise up. This group going to rise up. They didn't get the gospel. They didn't get the baptism of Jesus' name. They didn't hear. You, got, you have access to the baptism of Jesus' name. You ignore it, and your time run out, and you think you're going to be saved? Don't fool yourself. I just hope something was said tonight that will stir your prayer mind up. God bless you.